So in this time clip, what I'd like to show you today is uh, a variant of the Jingler, more mobile version if you like, and this one ultimately in the guys we're using it copies the uh, March Browns for early season. Using the Nano Silk, um, and you'll see its, uh, its uses in many forms, we're actually catching on. Uh, some people maintain it can be quite slippy. The secret is just keep that tension there, and you can see I'm actually that hook's just flexing a little bit. Also angling the thread, the butt end if you like, at 45 degrees there, so each subsequent turn just knits down to the previous one, making a nice even base you can see there. Just taking the tension off so it lies flat, it principally lies flat in its raw form anyways. Because it's so strong, rather than damage my scissors, I'll just feed in with a razor blade, take that butt end off there. Continue down the way. Ultimately, this the jingler will this this particular pattern will uh, sit low in the surface film because of the CDC hackle we're using. Um, so it's kind of cross between a done. But what I'm actually going to do is pop on a a little butt that ultimately imitates the discarded shock of uh, of the emerging fly. I'm just using the uh, Pearl micro glint for this. Catch that in, continue down the way just until we're coming to the bend. You can see how flat that thread is lying now, just there. So that's great. Beauty about the micro glint is there's a few robust fibers in there uh, incorporated to make it nice and nice and strong. It doesn't tear quite as readily as, say, uh, pearly Blue Rex tinsel. So I just work this back up now. All the while I'm just taking the tension off that thread, you'll just see me periodically spinning this in an anti-clockwise direction. So the thread lies flat. Working back up the hook shank, and we want some tailing fibres. I'm just using um, brown partridge hackle. Want three or four fibres, take off those butt ends there, or half a dozen. Just pull those 90 degrees to the stem and that aligns all the tips for us. Hold the fibres and actually pull the stem. We can see they're still the tips will be aligned because those butts are still aligned. Gauge tail length. Take out those butt ends there. And then we can pinch and loop those fibres. Again, gauging tail length, sat those up quite nice as well, please there. Tension off. Just guide it as we go. Touching turns again, coming back down. Keep this nice and neat. And we've got our tail. Tail slightly exaggerated because we want movement in there. This stage now, we can actually catch in ultimately what will be our rib and I've, I've stepped up to the uh, the Nano um, 6 or 100 denier. Nice tip for beginners, you've seen me do this before, those of you who watch the videos regular. Just catching this over our tying thread, what is ultimately our rib, and then using the tension to place it where we want. It's just on my near side, we pull this end, just snug that down. Obviously we want a little bit, little bit of overlap there. Bury those tip ends. Again I'm working down, you'll see because we're using ultimately what is a yarn body on the fly, I'm just in the interest of keeping everything nice and even, continually wind up and down the hook shank. So we've caught our ribbon there, you, periodically you'll, you'll see me there just taking the tension off or spinning the bobbin as we look down anti-clockwise. The reason is each turn we take as a right-hander revolves our thread or bobbin in a clockwise direction like that one revolution. So consequently as we keep winding like this the thread begins to tighten up and assume a round profile. Ideally at this stage of the tying, I'll take those turns off we want this to 
lie nice and flat so you'll just see me take the tension off there and you'll just see this thread just come nice and flat you can actually tell when you look at the bobbin as well I'll just wind this up which way the bias is with the tension you can see this now spinning clockwise so I've actually overspun it in an anti-clockwise direction so I've taken the tension off made it lie flat and consequently um, just tighten that up again so I'm just just letting this now you'll see it come to rest in a moment bear with me folks once this lies flat we can encourage it as well by just uh, feeding it through the fingers and there you can see instantly now we're back on we're back onto a nice flat base this um, certainly facilitates as far as we're concerned ni nice even foundation when we're tying flies uh, and especially when we're covering ground like this. So for, for the body now we've, we've attached what will ultimately be our rib. For the body what, what we're actually using is uh, the Semperfly um, Chadwick's 477 substitute you'll see here and we happen to have the original um, you can see it's a very very close copy. We've got a so short section of this what I'm actually going to do now is just take uh, the nail of my thumb and index finger and just tease out several of those fibres ultimately just to taper the yarn so it looks more attractive it's not too bulky at the rear end we're just about there with shaving these fibres a little bit slimmer see there the waist dampen those tips Square those off, just catching on your near side, quite close to ultimately where the body will start. And then wind up, you can see now the thread is lying nice and flat. There's a tiny wee bump there we can see, there's two options available to us now. We can, uh, for want of a better word, cheat by flattening that down with the tweezers. Or what we can do again, flatten our thread off, working backwards, come up to the point adjacent there, which I can see now, and wind back up, and this will create a nice flat base with no step in there, leaving plenty of room for our hackle as well. We want quite a, a, a bushy hackle. All I'm going to do now is twist the yarn, make it nice, tight and round in profile, rope-like, and then proceed to wind our, our body. And we get a lovely segmented effect even before we rib the fly, you'll see. Take your time now, there's no rush. Be sure to maintain tension though as you go, as you see there. You can, if you feel more comfortable, beginners might find that popping a pair of hackle pliers on the end can be advantageous. Okay, and we're there folks. Okay, and with a couple of turns dropped in front and snip off the waist. So for a contrasting rib we have our uh, six saw and all we all we need to do is take an indelible marker. I've got dark brown for a contrasting colour. See the tension on this bobbin holder now as it's unwinding. And then take our rib up between each segment.
Once we're at the front of the flight, obviously we can bind down what will ultimately be our rib. Feed in with our razor blade once more and just take that section off. Got one or two fibers sticking out. So the other beauty, if you like, and one of the outstanding pluses with the Nano is this flat line um, thread that ultimately we can split. Now you can, I can just see a natural split occurring right now. This allows us to form a rudimentary dubbing loop for the Hacklin. All I've got here is uh, three CDC hackles, one on top of the other. Um, what we're going to do is offer these up, just pull the fibres out square if you like, 90 degrees to the stem. Reason for three is it provides the bulk we need from one side. We can offer those up into our clip there and then we just cut away the waste. One of the beauties about Nano is not just its overall strength but its ability to, to um, split quite readily. In fact you can see there several fibres. This allows us to uh, form a, a rudimentary dubbing loop, a very neat one at that. All I've done is, is pop some CDC fibres in a material clip here. Then I'll just rest the thread over the ball of my, my index finger, feed in with a fine needle and split that thread. Then we just need to seat or position our CDC fibres in there. Be careful here. What we don't want to do is just um, make too many jerky movements. Now I'm actually spinning the thread in a clockwise direction. Bobbin holder's going clockwise. I'm maintaining tension here because I don't want it to sort of spin up tight uncontrollably. The other tip I'll give you is just pull those fibres out 90 degrees because otherwise if we've got the fibres down here there's a tendency for these top ones to catch against the hook point or the uh, vice jaws there and we don't want that. We want all those fibres to radiate out. Just a little bit of moisture there. Train those what will ultimately be our hackle fibres into sort of one direction by folding them. And then we can begin to form our hackle. Train those back. Just keep training them back. It'll look a little bit sort of untidy at this moment. Don't don't worry too much about that. Now we've got maximum tension on our bobbing, and you'll you'll see it instantly want to unravel itself just now, winding frantically in an anti-clockwise direction. I'll just encourage that a little bit more, and to finish the fly, we'll just include an attractive head of um, orange thread. And we can just complete with a three, four, five, six turn whip finish. The beauty about the 12 though is there's absolutely no build up whatsoever. Go in with our scissors, just push on there and then it's a case of rearranging that hackle so the fibres are forward. We don't want them exact to exact length but those slightly longer stray fibres will cut and there we go, a nice mobile jingler.